Good afternoon, everyone from Singapore, and hello to all our friends that are tuning from all over the globe. It's Friday, and I believe most parts of uh, Singapore might be raining now. Perfect weather to sleep in, but you still, cho you still choose to join us. Very thankful for it. So big welcome to today's session on AIoT of the future. My name is Wei Min, and a quick introduction about SG Innovate. We are a government-backed deep tech investor and company builder whose mission is to help entrepreneurial scientists build deep tech startups that are looking to solve big global problems. Our work also involves building a global community of leaders, thinkers, and doers to drive and scale up deep tech innovations in areas such as AI, healthcare, quantum tech, and autonomous technology across various industries. We also help to develop deep tech talents and provide support to startups who are looking to expand their capabilities. In today's event, we are glad to have partnered with Planet Spark, whose aim is to connect Singapore tech startup community by investing, collaborating, and supporting early and mixed stage startups that, are, that have commercially viable technologies. We will be starting this event with a panel discussion where I will be the moderator for today. Following which, we will leave about maybe say 10 to 15 minutes to take questions from the ground for our panelists to answer towards the end of the event. We encourage for all attendees to share with us your thoughts on the topic or interact with our speakers by posting your questions in the Q&A tab located at the bottom panel of the street. Otherwise, feel free to just say hi and do a quick shout out from where you are in the chat box below. With no further ado, do let me dive deeper into the topic and set the ground. Now, before we have our speakers introducing themselves, let us just talk a little bit about what artificial intelligence and internet of things is about. Now in the age of digitalization, data has been termed as the new currency of the future. And no, I am not referring to crypto. The value of using AI and data lies in its capability to tell us information or to give us insights to things that we can't see. Along with machine learning capabilities, we have entered a world where we can now achieve things that goes beyond just the human mind. Now imagine this with the internet of things. Data from all various sources coming together about activities with the right application of AI, there are much insights that we can derive across a multitude of sectors and industries. So you can imagine if I were to cite an analogy that uh, I read in a Forbes article that IoT is the digital nervous system and AI becomes the brain that makes the decision which controls the overall system. This little combination of AI and IoT thus brings us and deliver intelligent and connected systems that are capable of self-correcting and self-healing themselves. With its versatility, AIoT spans across four major segments, mainly variables. Uh, I believe in recent years, uh, that has been a big thing in Singapore. Health fitness trackers collecting information and apps that give you information on adjusting your lifestyle habits. Uh, smart homes the learning of user habits to provide automated home support for everyday life tasks. Smart cities, uh, integrating multiple levels of uh, municipal services that make cities safer and energy efficient to live in. And last but not least, smart industries or IIoT, Industrial Internet of Things, to use real-time analytics to optimize operations and foresee challenges such as maintenance requirements and workplace injuries and reducing workplace inju injuries. Looking at the numbers alone, uh, according to a business insider, it is estimated that there will be more than 55 billion IoT devices by 2025, which equates to about more than four devices for every person on earth. That's up about 9 billion since 2017. It is a whole treasure trove of information waiting for innovators to tap on and push the boundaries of data processing and intelligence in time to come. Not only that, according to Forbes, organizations that can apply real-time AI to IoT data could gain substantial business value, including as much as a 38% lift in profitability by 2035. Which brings us back to our agenda for today. With me, we have three distinguished guests who will share with us more on their views on what lies for the future of AIoT. While I would certainly like to make the introductions, I think it is best for our speakers themselves to share more on their work and also a short description to what do you think AIoT means to you and how it can impact the life of people in the future. So uh, our speakers, uh, 
if you can just show your videos. <laughs> yep, thank you so much. Yeah. So may I first invite Li Ying, Fei Li Ying, Managing Director of Panas Park, to do your introduction first. Li Ying, please. Hi, everyone. So thank you for joining us on this panel and thank you SG Innovate for actually um, putting together this panel to share about AIoT. Um, I think at Planet Spark. So actually, Planet Spark is an entrepreneurial and investment arm of Excel Point Technology. So Excel Point has been an, a hardware expertise in semiconductors, uh, where we are actually one of the leading regional um, chip distributor. So we have um, vast knowledge about all these hardware chips and um, its usage. And you know, amongst our portfolios are people like Xilinx, Analog Devices, Qualcomm. Um, over the years, I think we have uh, invested a lot in engineering capabilities, which is very, very important that we see in AIoT um, because technologies, deep tech, you know, they all require hardware support and resource. And that's where at Planet Spark, we actually carve out a special division to assist uh, new startups, new technologies to come together. Um, together, we can accelerate our growth. Uh, we aggregate partners together alongside VC partners, you know, partners like um, SG Innovate, to come together to see how we can develop applicable solutions to solve real AIoT problems, right? And then take it to the market. Um, so in short, I think um, we are like an accelerator, but I believe that uh, you know, we are very focused on commercialization and bringing all these startups together. And um, I think Raymin asked a question about what, um, what AIoT means to me um, and how I think it can impact people's life. I think he has, he has given a very good introduction of what AIoT is. I think to me, right, um, AI is like our brains, you know, in, in layman term, right? So it makes decision, but, you know, that are so capable as though they are like close to human beings. Um, and IoT then is actually the connectivity and that nervous system, you know, the neurotransmitters that are connecting this entire brain together. Um, it, it is amazing how they have these um, self-learning, self-correcting um, capabilities. And I think within this entire big ecosystem, you see machine learning, you see deep learning, and they're all part of um, the entire ecosystem of AI and IoT. And, uh, you know, I feel that this, this combination would really uh, bring forth a lot of new industries, um, like, you know, and, and achieve different goals, like um, Industry 4.0, how we get a, a smart nation, smart cities, a building that's smart. And um, I feel that this is really a simulation of human intelligence on a different level. I believe that it is definitely going to impact our lives in, in practically every way. We are already seeing it right now, right? I mean, we can't leave our house with a without a smartphone because it tells us so so many information um, and look at how all these you know um, um, different devices have changed our lives um, it is projected you know this entire market to be over us 60 billion in 2025 which is actually not too far from now so i mean good for companies who are in this aiot industry already and um, i mean i can imagine our lives you know, at 20, in 2025, you know, I wake up in the morning, I go towards my EV car. I don't know if it's a Tesla. I hope so. Um, it recognizes my face, you know, it unlocks automatically when I enter. It tells me exactly, you know, it knows where exactly I'm going. It tells me the weather condition, the traffic condition. And I mean, all these kind of uh, interconnectivity is just going to make my life so much more convenient, so much easier. It gives um, a lot of data. Um, so data storage is going to become a very important part of the entire AIoT ecosystem. And, you know, I can go on and on, right? The list is endless. And I think in future, we probably don't even have to lift a finger because all these AI, you know, would self-learn my habits and, and actually educate me how I should live my life. And um, I hope we're all not going to get too lazy because of AIoT, but I think that in short is, is what AIoT to me, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, Wei Min, you're yeah, on. Sorry, I realized. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Yeah, so thank you, Lee, so much for sharing. Uh, yeah, I think for the perspective of, you know, improving your quality of life, uh, having all the ease of access, uh, making all the information coming to you, you know, improving all the automation and everything, that's definitely something that people that uh, can look forward to in the future. 
Yeah. So moving on, uh, can we have uh, Albert Chai, CEO of Clockpack, to share a little bit more? Uh, Albert, please. All right. Thank you, Wei Hi, everyone. My name is Albert Chai. I'm the founder and CEO of Clockpack Technologies. We are a A Star spin off company. Uh, company specialized in uh, fast and low latency wireless technology, in particular, millimeter wave communication. I think uh, this is uh, a way we see that communication needs for, for IoT, and in fact, moving towards AIoT, this becomes a very essential part of the whole ecosystem. We, we should, effectively, we need a very high bandwidth, uh, fast communication system in order to, to allow uh, devices, sensors to be all connected together, producing very similar uh, communication as well as uh, fast response. So our, our, com our company is set up to do using mini middle wave technology as one of the uh, uh, newer wireless uh, communications uh, technology to deliver cost-effective solution uh, and enabling the widespread use of uh, AIoTs in terms of a smart city application, industrial operating automation, so, et cetera. So this is uh, our company set up to do. Uh, in terms of the AIoT, I think, as everyone knows, it's actually a combination of AI and IoT. I think IoT has been around for a while. I think it's been in a decade. I believe so. It's been so long. But uh, in the past, we've been uh, actually focusing IoTs on basically focusing on connecting devices together. Basically, just sensors connecting and, and just sending data, collecting data. And that's where we come to a point of uh, technology maturity. I think uh, now we have a lot of technologies able to effectively send data, connect devices together. So what's next? I think it comes to the point that we have so much data uh, and it, it beyond the, the, the human ability to process it. We need the, 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 the uh, computing and uh, technology. In fact, it's eventually the AI to help to digest the data and extract value of this uh, data collected. That's where the, what Wayne has mentioned, data is a new, uh, currency, as it says, because by having the data with the enabling the AI to extract the value, that's where we can see more useful uh, 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 decisions, oh, sorry, useful information out of it. So uh, I can see that there's three aspects of the IoT that is uh, different from, from the IoT itself. The IoT is, in my opinion, is more proactive in nature than the IoT, which is uh, pretty much very reactive to the past events. So what do we mean by that? Because uh, uh, in terms of the IoT has a ability to self-heal. Imagine you have a, a, a massive deployment of sensors, devices out, and there's no way for you to manage it. And in fact, if you want to manage those kind of a massive deployments, it's going to be a very um, exhaustive and resource uh, intensive activity. So it must have the ability to self heal itself and improve the reliability and the lifespan the use. So that's where the AI comes in as well. Uh, secondly, so with the data, the AI also helps to make the decisions for us. So by, by having the data with the insights of the past, we can make good prediction of the future events. That's what we do, right? As a human being, we take past us as reference to make decision for the future. So AI comes in to help us with the, with the massive amount of data they can digest in a very short period of time. I think they can make better decision than us in a certain, certain way uh, we like it to be. It assists in, in, in productivity. Uh, and the last thing, I think it's because of the, again, with the uh, continuous streaming of data, or the aid of the IoT itself, of course, the AI has the ability to learn this where the machine learning is coming. You can learn on the fly and always learning continuously as the system uh, being deployed. So that makes the, the machine very adaptable, very flexible, and, uh, and it can be response to new types of events and situation uh, uh, where uh, it, it becomes very uh, useful in terms of accuracy when it comes to decision making. So this is how I see IoT self in these three aspects. It is very, very important. All right. So maybe I'll just pass the time to the next speaker, Arun. Arun, uh, he's uh, into the uh, video analytics. I think he has a better uh, uh, aspects of the, the AI than I do. All right. Thank you. 
Sure. Uh, thanks, Albert. Um, to add on to what Lee Ying and Albert said, you know, um, AI, most people think of it as the brain. And uh, as Lee Ying pointed out, like we have a nervous system and the brain is kind of controlling these IoT de uh, devices at the edge. And Albert's company is making the communication possible between these devices. So for Seven Sense, uh, I'm one of the co-founders of Seven Sense. Um, I'm a serial entrepreneur. This is my third company. For Seven Sense, we've been dealing with, you know, not just um, the communication or the uh, edge IoT devices, the hardware itself, but also the algorithms, the machine learning algorithms themselves. So how do we train that brain? How do we, you know, uh, it's like a child, uh, you know, a child learns, okay, this is a bus because it has four wheels. It is yellow in color. And therefore I can think of this as a bus. So training these statistical machine learning algorithms is very much akin to training a child. And uh, it requires a lot of data. Imagine how much data a child processes, you know, just being out there in the world. So um, this is one of the things that, you know, the AIoT fusion meet, means to me is this confluence of this huge amount of data that you, you need to train these AI systems. And then the training compute required to actually train those systems. For example, even our facial recognition algorithms that we train, they have to be trained on like eight GPU machines, which cost like $32 an hour. And the training takes from any anywhere, one iteration takes about two weeks. So there is that huge amount of data for in our case for FR, it's like um, about 24 million images. And there's a huge amount of compute that is churning out that machine learning model and then finally, there's that transition of that brain going in towards these small little sensors, which um, even today are very, very limited uh, when compared to what the size of the models that are produced by academia. So that's a big gap. And that's that's the AIoT challenge for me uh, as uh, co-founder of Seven Sense is high accuracy um, use cases some of them require a lot amount of data, a lot of amount of compute, building huge uh, models, and then fitting those models onto the sensors and the uh, devices that are out there. That is the biggest challenge. And I think that is the, the promise of AIT because where there is no problem, uh, there are few innovations. When there are challenges, there are a lot of innovations. Thank you, Varu. And also thank you, Albert. Yeah, I think the both of you have given uh, a very good uh, reference and also a better in-depth understanding of uh, what AIoT really is about. So today, we I'm glad to say that we actually have a very good representation uh, of, of our different areas. So we have uh, Planet Spark that comes in from a whole building of ecosystem, bringing people together. Uh, I mean, bringing uh, startups, you know, corporates together, and also providing expertise on the hardware development. Uh, side of things. Then we have Albert that does all the communications uh, on, on really improving the com communication and connectivity uh, through the entire AIoT system. And Varun comes in from the machine learning, you know, algorithms, uh, uh, AI, you know, processing capability of things. So I think we definitely have a very good balance of, uh, of uh, perspective in, in today's topic of AIoT of the future. Yeah. So if I may, uh, I would just like to share, I mean, so I would just like to uh, check in with uh, our audience again. Up to, if there's any questions that you may have for our speakers, please just feel free to use the Q&A button uh, located at the bottom panel of your screen uh, to, to just tell us a, any questions that you may have. We will try to address it along the way or maybe towards the end of the session. Yep. So now, uh, continuing on, Perhaps I will just start with uh, posting uh, a question to, to Ling. So uh, earlier you have shared uh, some, some of the areas that uh, Planet Spark is, is working on, but I'm just wondering, could you just share uh, maybe just more plans about how Planet Spark is actually developing your business arm, specifically in the whole AIoT space and also relating to how, uh, what, you, what you have described. Uh, your future of AIoT be like? Yeah. 
Um, I think within Planet Spark, we have actually just launched officially this year in January. And I'm very happy and honored that, you know, both Clocktech and Seven Cents have been collaborating very closely with us uh, along this way um, towards, you know, our vision of AIoT. I think AIoT was a segment that we specifically went into and uh, we specifically have the vision to build within Planet Spark itself. Um, you know, within this, you know, there are so many verticals that we see AI OT, OT um, you know, stemming into, and of which I think we are very targeted at smart building and systems, you know, security, uh, smart sustainability, and also smart health tech. So I think these were the three areas that we are looking towards um, building um, within Planet Spark itself. And where we are at is that we, we really want to build good middleware and good platforms, right, to actually allow startups um, who has that idea to cater to, to a segment of AIoT to come to us and we can co-build um, together a solution that is going to solve real life problems. And, and what we are targeting to do is we aggregate partners so that we can showcase a suite of, you know, viable applications within these arenas using Singapore, of course, hopefully as the market and the test bit before we then actually channel it into our networks. Um, you know, we, we span across 50 cities across the globe and we have got very good market intelligence in terms of what the market is seeing in different regions and different countries uh, when it actually applies to AIoT. Um, you know, some countries may be much faster in their development. Um, some are a little bit more, you know, backtrack. So I think this is where uh, we look at and how we are trying to gain and, um, you know, um, aggregate all these startups together um, in, in developing this segment, which I feel that at the end of the day, I think if, if I were to say four main key points will be, we want to innovate, right? Uh, we want to lend um, resources and hardware support. So this comes into investments, you know, um, and then we, we, we hope that together we can inspire, you know, all these startups to work together. And at the end of the day, I think it's about creating an impact, right? We all have a vision for AIoT. We know that AIoT is going to be the future. Um, you know, like what I think Albert Varun has mentioned and even women, uh, and I think a lot of people in this panel and this webinar knows that um, it's going to come one day. Uh, in fact, I think it has probably already started, right? I mean, I, I remember reading a piece of news about um, AI being deployed years back when, when it actually won one of a chess competition, um, it actually won a human being, right? So, I mean, all these kind of interesting things have been coming up and, and we know that one day it is going to take over our future. So, I think we really want to see this impact creating um, in terms of sustainable impact. And I think scale at the end of the day, scale for all these startups will be the key point. Um, and so we, we really hope that through this, um, everybody will forge strong relationships and actually scale their technologies um, to be applied within this field. Yeah. Thank you, Lee. So I think uh, you have mentioned a few points, you know, like uh, aggregating start, uh, the startups together, developing uh, capabilities, and also uh, you, you have uh, emphasized on scaling. So just wondering, you know, in the, just the, in the spirit of innovation, uh, how, how do you think we can, uh, you know, encourage the whole collaboration of uh, startups with corporates so that uh, we can actually have more development uh, solutions with regards to IoT to secure uh, a future uh, where, where there is a stronger, bigger infrastructure where uh, different players can really easily work together to develop the whole capabilities of AIoT as a whole? I think firstly, um, looking at the context of Singapore itself, right, uh, it is a very small country. So, you know, it is a very good um, place and start point for a lot of these startups to come together, um, create solutions, do a test bit, um, you know, as compared to say a country like China, Vietnam, where it is, it is possibly harder to aggregate everyone. So I think for me, uh, within Planet Spark, uh, we all we strongly believe in collaborations. Um, I think one quote, right, that we we share a lot within Planet Spark is "hunting as a pack." Um, you know, a lot of my colleagues, you know, repeatedly speak about this concept. 
And um, it, it, you know, we see the importance of it, right? I mean, this was also the sole purpose why we, we set up Planet Spark, because we feel that you know, within the AIoT framework, um, you know, you have so many players. You have your sensors, um, which which include your edge cameras, your you know even thermal cameras, thermal sensors, uh, Wi-Fi, your infrastructure. You know, so so many so many of this. And then after that, it goes through an edge, right? Um, you know, where Varun comes in to play, and then you require connectivity. You know, where ClockTech comes into play, um, things like five G even satellites, um, software, cloud, data management, it's all going to be a part of this. And, and if, if they don't come together, we wouldn't be able to fulfill applications like your video analytics, you know, things, um, your AI, your decision-making, um, your predictive analysis. I think these are all things that will only be able to be achieved when everyone works together. And I think at Planet Spark, we are uh, building a lot of uh, partnerships in order to actually um, achieve a similar goal, right? Um, you know, in terms of, you know, you will see in, in future smart factories, logistics, and all these will require a whole suite of these applications. And I feel that underlying all these, you know, comes with another set of challenges like, you know, standards, testing frameworks, um, compliance, you know, what kind of standards is AIoT going to be? I think it's still something that is a work in progress. So I think in summary, I believe that one company or one startup alone will not be able to satisfy this entire ecosystem and, and partners will be then the key to, to an ecosystem like that. And even at Planet Spark, you know, we, we, only, we, we only play this very important role of a hardware support and hardware expertise. But we know clearly that we will need partners like, you know, I mean, even, you know, SG Innovate to have, um, uh, to have a pool of good community of um, startups and deep tech technologies, you know, venture capitalist partners who can play a part in funding the startups uh, because they, you know, they have strong financial backing. SME partners, I think design and build partners, and even other engineering partners that come in together, um, including government agencies, you know, to be able and willing to, to start all these proof of concepts and to put them into you know, existing buildings. And so I think with everyone coming together, um, there will be this accelerated growth and success with these startups you know, in order to achieve um, this AIoT concept that we have been sharing today. And um, you know, I, think, I think not everybody is going to be able to do the full suite. And so you know, we have been a part of consortiums. We see a lot of consortiums being set up um, you know, in fact, we ourselves are part of the India Consortium, Vietnam Consortium, and, and these consortiums consist of, you know, 20 over partners just coming together to solve smart city challenges, right? So I think that is really the key goal for, for ourselves. Um, and, and, you know, we want to encourage um, startups to come together, um, be willing to open and share and collaborate and partner each other in order to achieve this um, this vision. Yeah. So I think um, I'd like to add like maybe one other kind of partner, corporate partner that uh, Liying um, possibly did not uh, anticipate and mm -hmm. which is very important for AI companies and that's a data partner. So, you know, you have all these problem statements like, okay, can we solve smart parking? Okay, can we solve X, Y, Z in, in the machine learning space? And the only companies, I mean, if you are using deep learning or machine learning based approaches that are statistical in nature, you have to have large data sets. And those large data sets are not accessible to start startups. They are available only to corporates and governments. So apart from, you know, just uh, highlighting the POC or, uh, you know, uh, highlighting the problem statement and things like that, uh, I think um, that's, that's an area where corporate partners can really help startups because um, at their scale, with their size, uh, they have the data. So that data, they may have the data, but they don't have the expertise to convert that data into active intelligence or active uh, solutions to problems. Uh, that's the domain of startups. So that's uh, a possible um, in area of collaboration that is often overlooked uh, in, in this space. Yep. Thank you, Varun. Thank you, Lee. I think 
uh, as you know, we definitely share the same sentiments. And then it's good that Varun actually point out, you know, the importance of having the, the large data set base in order for startups to work with, in order for these entire capabilities of uh, AIoT to grow, you know, as, as a whole ecosystem moving forward. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, with that, maybe I'll just go on uh, to Albert. I have some questions for you. Uh, I think just on the whole communication side of things, right? Uh, one thing that is of interest, you know, recent years is all about 5G. And I think that that's one of the main, uh, one, one of the greatest uh, buzz, you know, how, how the future developments of AIT is like with the introduction of 5G. And in Singapore, we are still at the very early stages exploring this technology. How do you see exactly uh, 5G being a game changer for IoT in your opinion? All right, thank you. Um, talking about 5G, I think it's a, it'll be a lot of things to talk about. In fact, 5G is a, a very important milestone in terms of wireless communication because it's uh, kind of encompassed a very wide scope of the technology combination of all the wireless uh, technology in the past and in the future together. In fact, uh, this will definitely help in the IoT development and adoption in the future. But in general, I think in, there's two aspects of 5G that it promises is very important. I think number one is definitely a faster connectivity. It can uh, deliver much faster, much more data in, in shorter period of time. And the next thing that is important that it promises is a low latency, meaning it has a very fast response time uh, between end to end. So these two, I think is a, a very important uh, key, key point in terms of the, the communication aspects. And of course, there are other important factors which typically are more implicit or people are usually overlook. I think I'd like to highlight is also one thing is security. Uh, it's actually very, very important, but it's often not mentioned most of the time because people think security as given, but uh, it's not, typically it's not. Um, maybe you, as you guys have known, the, the recent uh, gas pipe company uh, being, being hacked, and uh, they have to pay a big sum of money to get it, get it uh, uh, unlocked in a way. That actually is a very strong reminder how important uh, in the network security is in terms of not just speed and latency. Security is one, one thing and it's an uh, endless risk. It's never going to end. It's, it's, it's an evergreen, a high value sector, in my opinion, uh, uh, because cybersecurity is, is, is not going to end somewhere soon. In fact, it's is uh, things will go, go more and more complicated and more complex. So I think uh, we have to be mindful about this and have to invest uh, uh, deeply into cybersecurity, not just in terms of infrastructure. Uh, maybe just a, a food of thought for the audience. Uh, when it comes to 5G network, if your whole business is built on a 5G network, who is actually responsible for your cybersecurity? Is it you or the, uh, the service provider? So this is something that they're going to want to build an application on it, uh, building a solution on it. Please be mindful. Uh, I think it's, a, it's, it's just, a, just a point of discussion. Uh, coming back to the opportunity of 5G, I think the, the, it opens up a new set of applications that, uh, that requires a uh, huge bandwidth as well as very fast response that I mentioned earlier, the two points. I think one of the very uh, immediate application I can think of, and it's, it's going to come definitely, is autonomous driving. This is where huge amount of sensors are being deployed in the car. We need to somehow, somewhat, be able to deliver those data out. And they require very fast response time so they can react to the, the environment. So I think there are, uh, I think autonomous is just one of the very uh, uh, immediate, uh, in fact, uh, upcoming uh, application in 5G. Um, of course, there are other applications that also require similar uh, uh, stringent mission critical condition. Uh, I would say the 5G or data network in general is somewhat similar to our usual uh, road and traffic infrastructure, infrastructure that we use every day. I think uh, 5G, I, I usually use it as a, it's a, it's a paid service or it's like our ERP system is in a toll road in Singapore. People actually pay to use why would people actually pay a ERP? Because I think in general, they just want to get to their destination uh, faster uh, as well as smoother, right? That's why people get to pay. 
But uh, just have to bear in mind that uh, uh, in any infrastructure, there's always a physical limitation, right? As uh, more and more users are jumping on the, the wagon, just like and the more and more cars, no matter how many new highways are you, are you gonna, gonna build, if you don't control the number of cars, it's just gonna get congested. It's just a matter of time. Similarly, this is what 5G is about. Uh, of course, technology advances, but imagine as technology advances, new application jump on, taking advantage of the, the bigger bandwidth. 10 years ago, you can never imagine uh, 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 how big is uh, uh, one, one gig or one tera. Today, one tera is uh, really nothing. Uh, you can easily fill it up in a, in a couple of days if you're doing your video analytics data collection. It's, it's so easy. So it, it's just a matter, it, it's, there's a physical limit to it. As an application actually jump on the wagon when there's a the technology advancement, so to 5G. So of course, uh, uh, we have to also uh, be mindful that uh, this, this uh, uh, space is going to use up quickly and the cost to it may not be the same. Uh, I just take it as a ERP. When the cars get congested, I think the easy thing is either you build more infrastructure or you raise the cost. Right, I think this this thing is uh, is is usually the, the lab levels they use to to control control the data traffic. I think uh, so. When I look at this whole thing, five G is good for high value services, uh, uh, services that customer willing to pay for 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 it, uh, pay a premium in fact for for this using of that that services. Where else you have to, in terms of building the whole. ALT solution, you have to also leverage on the use of a complementary technology as well. Not forgetting the free to use, although uh, free to use technology, wireless technology, like for example, what we are doing with 60 gigahertz uh, millimeter wave, which is essentially free to use. If you have a good complementary of this, those non-essential mass services uh, where, where the, the customers are more price sensitive, cost sensitive, they are able to, to, to be able to drive the adoption if you were to go on to a, a, a cheaper highway in a way that I call it a free highway so that uh, it becomes adoption becomes easier. I think not everyone is ready to fork out uh, some of uh, a lot of money just to get usually the business uh, people will be the first one to jump on it. They are the one who are able to generate uh, a value by paying more value by paying but not for general public or consumer. So when you build a uh, AIoT solution, uh, I, I strongly urge to, to think about uh, scalability in terms of cost in mind so that uh, you're able to, to sustain as, as well when you build your IoT system. I think I'd like to add, uh, add a few points there. So, you know, uh, 5G was like when it came out, it was like touted as the fat pipe, you know, the ultimate bandwidth available and the small little edge IoT devices, which cannot do the compute at the edge, they will pipe the compute to a cloud data center and a lot of compute may be centralized. But we've seen that in the past as well. Uh, if you remember when the internet, the broadband thing came out, um, everyone was like excited about these terminals. Oh, we're going to have these like uh, thin client terminals and all the data is going to reside in the cloud. And we're going to don't, we won't need personal computers. Who's going to build uh, personal computers, which require so much extra processing at the edge, but that never took off. Right. So, it, uh, it's, it's the same thing here. Like if you're talking about AI and IOT, just having a fat pipe is not a panacea for, for all problems. So, um, yeah, that's uh, that, that's the point I wanted to make. Thank you, Albert. Thank you, Varun, as well. Uh, actually, the whole, you know, the highways, the cars, the, this analogy actually heard uh, quite a number of times, really, you know, like how big, the, how, how much, how many highways you need to build, the size of the cars, how many cars you have on the, on the highway when it comes to communication. So I think that's definitely very, very relevant when it comes to uh, 5G. And I think you have, have rightfully uh, pointed out, you know, the, the different opportunities that uh, lies ahead uh, and, and also the, the, the challenges as well. And a very good point on the cybersecurity aspect too. Yeah. So I think maybe I'll just uh, jump to the next question uh, that I would like to pose uh, Varun this time, maybe. So I think when it comes to uh, 
developing new solutions, right? You know, like really for the future of uh, the field of AIoT. You know, in your opinion, as a successful and experienced entrepreneur, what kind of support, you know, like for example, software versus hardware, is the considered the most crucial that startups may require in in advancing uh, their capabilities in AIoT. So I think uh, the first and foremost thing is uh, access to funding because mm-hmm. as any deep technology, uh, you know the gestation cycle of the technology from gathering data sets to training excellent models to reducing those models to come to the edge and IoT devices. That's a long period of time. So uh, just as you know, pharmaceutical companies need a, a large amount of capital to get to market, so do deep tech companies. And the first and foremost thing is access to the capital. If you don't have access to the capital as a startup, there's not much you can do. The second biggest thing that you need is access to data. So as a machine learning company, as an AI company, if you don't have data, if you have very small data sets, then you're not going to make much progress. So um, capital can come from venture capitalists, data can come from corporates, governments, uh, any large organization of scale that has the data. The next thing, of course, is uh, the expertise because you know, as you know, the expertise in uh, doing hardware is again uh, something that is is like most venture capitalists like to stay away from hardware because it's so, you know, you have to set up such big, huge things and factories, you have to think about factories and inventories and, um, you know, components becoming obsolete, but it, all of those things. So, of course, uh, that in that sense, Planet Spark type of programs really help us because, well, they they can they have visibility on that side of things. So, um, I would say the uh, like the the support, the best kind of support is uh, first of all capital, second uh, data. I would say third is also talent. Uh, AI talent, AI and machine learning talent is not easy to come by. And that's where um, programs in Singapore like AI.SG, which are trying to build local talent from scratch, uh, are also um, part of uh, ways that startups can be supported in this space. So to sum it up, capital, data, talent, knowledge in the hardware, on the hardware side. Yep. Allow me to echo what Havani has said. Sorry, um, I think it's a right food pointed out that a startup usually or typically don't have the resources uh, or we have very limited resources. So the key thing is we can't do everything uh, by ourselves. So I think uh, one of the key points that is very, very important and I'd like to uh, emphasize is to leverage on the power of community. I think this is uh, leveraging on partners in your development because Oh, all in all, you can't, again, you can't do everything by yourself. I would say, if as a startup, just focus on one thing. Just focus on one thing and that's identify your strength and just focus on that and form a partnership to provide the other pieces together to, do a, to deliver a complete, a complete solution. I think that would be a, a, a better approach than trying to do everything by yourself. Uh, of course, having a partner is one thing. Having a strong partner is, is another story. So again, I'd like to, uh, uh, coming back to Plan X Park, uh, thanks for the opportunity. I think uh, they, they themselves uh, realized this uh, uh, importance and came out with this initiative. With a strong partners, you are able to access to, to better talents, better resources, even to market access, uh, which is a very important in the later stage of the business. So this is where I think there's a lot of value coming together and, and, and pulling everybody at once and coming up with a complete solution. And one last thing maybe I'd like to point out is that uh, being a startup uh, and, uh, and as a hardware company myself when I started, I think coming back, if I will have to redo this again, I would say I would like to focus more on the software development in the beginning rather than hardware because software development typically, not that it's easy, but typically we require less resources. If you are smart enough, you know, the brain of the AI, you just need one laptop, your bedroom, you're done. So this is where, where I think with that, the, the entry, all you need is a very good idea, very good algorithm, and you can, you can go into it. Less, less uh, resources you need to build hardware and leverage on the, the community. Like the players, they provide a platform. 
So work with them uh, on the hardware side to, to uh, provide the product differentiation. I think the, the chances of success is much, much higher if we were to take that approach. And of course, once we achieve the success, um, building hardware uh, uh, when your company is more financially strong, it'll be a better uh, it'll be a, a, a option that you can explore in the next path. Thank you. I think that is right. I think, Albert, if I remember, once again, you have uh, echoed, you know, whatever Li Ying has uh, shared at the beginning as well. You know, the whole building of, it's the very importance of really having the entire community come together, you know, having each other's, one another's support, uh, be it on market access or the database uh, access. Uh, it's, it's this level of cooperation and collaboration that's very important for the growth in order to secure, you know, to, to pave the way of uh, technology that advance towards the a stronger future. So I think I'm a little bit mindful of the time. We have quite a number of questions, but I have uh, one, just one, one general question uh, to pose to each and every one of you. Uh, maybe we just do this in a very quick fire form, format where you just give a, a very short and quick answer of what you think about it. Uh, so I'd like to ask, right, you know, for earlier uh, in my introduction, I, I, I cited you know, areas that AIoT is making the biggest impact, you know, smart homes, wearables, smart cities, smart industries. If I were to bring the conversation back to Singapore, you know, which areas do you think Singapore has the biggest opportunity for mass adoption by the public? Yeah, so maybe uh, I can like to pose the question to, to Ling first. Yeah, I was gonna say this is a, a tough question because, you know, in my opinion, I think that Singapore is a small country and, uh, you know, my answer to this question would actually be that all the areas are ultimately going to change our lives, you know, as, as I, I detailed uh, initially, you know, even from the, from the personal life, um, all the way to, you know, um, smart factories, smart IoT, smart buildings, everything comes together. Um, you know, we need our phones at all times. We are so interconnected. People are always on the go, right? So, um, you know, I feel that at the end of the day, all these things will come together along, alongside. And I think, there will be opportunities in different segments. And therefore, we also picked, um, you know, um, segments within these spaces uh, to focus on because we do see the scalability in it. And I think just, you know, zooming in again um, and aligning it with Singapore's strategic national initiatives, right? Um, we do see things like um, Singapore focusing a lot on smart nations. Um, you know, uh, Industry 4.0, I think is something that, you know, we see this whole entire fourth revolution being this interconnectivity and they actually all tie in together, right? A smart nation would, would definitely adopt Industry 4.0 as a, as a whole. Um, we see sustainability being a very important part of our lives as well. And then, you know, most recently, the Green Plan, which is going to encompass, again, everything that we talk about uh, in terms of, you know, even power monitoring, how do we use energy more efficiently, EV cars, which, which is a very big topic, um, and, and all these kind of different technologies that comes together. So I can say that, you know, to me, I would say everything within this AIoT space um, is going to be essential and um, is going to be an important part of all of our lives. Um, I don't know if uh, Albert and Varun agrees with me. Uh, I'm sure they would, right? I mean, they would want AIoT to be scalable and <laughs> applicable to every part of our lives so that, you know, um, it gives scale to their company as well. Yeah. Yep. So, so maybe, I, uh, Albert, you can just chip in as well. What do you think? You know, the, the yeah, I think it, is most ready in adoption. Yeah. Mm. What the opportunities are there, I think it's uh, up to... Uh, uh, everyone to grab, but in my opinion for Singapore, I think the industrial AIoT and smart cities are more uh, uh, valid to us as we have the biggest opportunity, if I would say. Why I say that? Because thankfully our government is more forward looking, is willing to invest and willing to try new technology. I think that gives opportunity uh, uh, to test bit uh, newer application in terms of the smart city solution, uh, industrial automation. That's, that's uh, one thing we can consider to take, uh, take advantage of. Not all other countries' government are as, as good as uh, where we are today. I think we have more opportunity than, than what's available out there. Uh, please be thankful about that. <laughs> and of course, uh, uh, in other technology, like areas like wearables, uh, uh, smart homes, I think that is more of a bigger trend. And in fact, uh, 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 everyone is doing that. You're looking at very, very wide 
space and, and the competitive uh, competition is very strong. And, and of course, your customer is very hard to please. Uh, you are looking at consumer market. They, they typically want cheap and good. So you must be the best and the cheapest in order to win the game. So I think it's a, a, a much tougher market to address. Uh, where else uh, in uh, industrial IoT and, and smart city application, I think uh, cost is not as sensitive as long as you are able to provide the right value uh, to it. So there is some more fighting chance if you were to uh, look into this two area for the start. Yeah, I think uh, maybe I'll just anecdotic, uh, anecdotally add a few like uh, examples. I think Singapore is already quite smart in its uh, you know various initiatives. So recently I was at Marina Barrage and like uh, I was told I can't go to the roof and I was like why can't I go to the roof and they said there's a lightning alert. I say I, I can't see any lightning anywhere and sure enough five minutes later there was lightning. So, I mean, uh, these are the sort of things that, you know, it, are already happening uh, in, in the background that we are not even aware of. Uh, similarly, for contact tracing, the Trace Together app, I mean, it's, I think it's phenomenal that uh, it, it, that is really um, a need for the hour. Like, and it's a pretty good and interesting application of IoT where all these phones are actually talking to each other and from there you can form a social graph and you can figure out how how people are getting affected or clusters are formed and track and uh, trace the disease so i think there are a lot of interesting areas uh, industry 4.0 uh, at planet spark when it was inaugurated uh, minister chan chun singh was there he talked about advanced manufacturing so of course in the industrial sector also i'm sure there are opportunities so um, I think um, Liying uh, hit the nail on the head. I think it will flourish in all areas. Yeah, um, I, I mean, I just want to come in and at the same time, I think I know I saw a question about what are some of the challenges or what are the, you know, what are the drivers and challenges. Um, I think industrial, you know, where we focus a lot on um, and Singapore focuses a lot on because again, we're a small country. We really need to brand ourselves as the design hub to test bit a lot of um, industrial solutions. Um, I think one big driver actually, like what Varun said, is actually um, anomaly detection, right? I mean, we, we again, we, we want to know about things before it happens. You know, as human beings now, we are, we are looking, you know, and what Albert mentioned previously, it's not just reactive. I think we are actually looking at it being very proactive. You know, it's going to like tell us that something is faulty before it really happens. So we are there to be able to fix the problem before it explodes. Um, so I think this is one of the biggest driver for industrial. And at the same time, I think, um, honestly speaking, I think we're just lack of one big challenge that I do foresee. Um, one is data security, which... Um, I think, um, you know, Albert mentioned, right, data security with so many interconnected devices, um, collecting so much data. I don't know if there is this risk, you know, of privacy security breaches that we are seeing across um, so many um, technologies right now, all worrying about this thing. Um, how are we going to shift to then edge computing that hopefully minimizes such kind of things? Um, and that's where Varun comes in. And another one where we see is, is the infrastructure um, ready? for us, um, you know, when we talk about EV, where everyone is, you know, it's such a buzzword now. I think I hear it all the time. It's like, oh, you know, buzzing in my ears, right? Um, but when we look around us, um, is the infrastructure ready? Um, is there good design? You know, can we find a charging station easily if I were to change my car to an EV car? Um, but we can see that because of all this, there's going to be accelerated growth to build such kind of infrastructures. And I think once these standards and infrastructure comes about, you know, we will be there. Yeah, we'll be there. Yep. Thank you, everyone. And I can definitely sound that Li is very passionate about EVs. <laughs> all right. <laughs> now, we actually, I see quite a number of very interesting questions uh, from the audience. So I'd just like to use, take the opportunity to start answering them. So I think I would just like, I would like to pick out uh, uh, one, one question by uh, Kang, where, because, you know, when we talk about AIoT, uh, the whole concept and idea, people understand it. But in order to truly understand it, you need like concrete examples. You know, how does it really get applied? So I think Varun briefly mentioned about the uh, trace together as well as examples, but I think uh, Kang over here asked, do you have any like 
like existing AIoT implementations today that is live at scale at prototyping mode that other examples that you can be able to share. So uh, any, any of you would like to in the field of um, like video analytics, we've done a few projects uh, for a few companies earlier on in this pandemic where we were doing people counting so that, you know, inside a mall, uh, there is not, there's no congestion. Uh, people are, uh, there is only a fixed amount of capacity and floor space that a mall has. And um, when the pandemic started, there was really no way to count uh, people getting inside the mall. So how many people are inside the mall? And when those restrictions came in, like we deployed with uh, one of the malls and they were over, able to open like four to five of their exits, whereas most other malls were only opening up one exit. And the only reason why they were able to open up four or five exits was because they could obtain a count of the people and restrict the number of people and, and their uh, contact so uh, this this is in i mean it's kind of difficult to think of a camera as a sensor but a camera can be a sensor you know a camera can count people uh, a camera can do a lot of the camera can recognize people camera can determine the proximity of people to each other camera can detect uh, all sorts of uh, you know let let's say uh, a particular kind of object a particular kind of vehicle so if you think about, if you start to think of uh, even cameras as sensors and not as these things that take pictures that human beings have to interpret, uh, if you think of a camera as a sensor with a machine learning algorithm that is able to pick up on signals uh, and those signals are visual signals. So those sort of systems can be deployed pretty much everywhere. You look around you, everywhere you will see surveillance cameras and there's a lot of data that can be gleaned from those kind of systems. I, I totally agree with Harun. I mean, uh, camera as a sensor, in fact, uh, is something that we recognize. In fact, it's a, it's a much more demanding sensor than the rest of the other, other more, more preliminary sensors like temperature. In fact, uh, this is where we recognize the, the, the power uh, of video, video feeds. With a uh, couple with the AI, we can typically do much more. Uh, for example, uh, people detection, intrusion detection, uh, business analytics, uh, how many customers you have, where the customers is. Uh, I mean, one of the, the, the application, I think not in Singapore, but in the US, and Walmart actually uses uh, analytics to, to, tra to track their retailers. I mean, where, where their, their customers are wondering, uh, where, where, where are the, the products that are uh, small, popular. These are very uh, real applications that's been used. But today, uh, uh, one of the key things that, that prevents the proliferation of, of use of video cameras is the connectivity. I think uh, the, the demand for bandwidth is much higher than the rest of the sensors, uh, be it. And, and that's why uh, this is where my company comes in to, to help to, to, to solve part of this solution. Of course, we can't do everything, but uh, in fact, we provide uh, a value in this, in this particular area. Um, by having uh, good access to, to, to video camera sensors, I think uh, coupled with the edge computing, uh, edge AI, I think we can do much more uh, than what we can do today. All right, <clears throat> sorry. Yeah, so I think uh, for the questions, uh, we, we I think we only have time for one last one maybe. And I'll just choose the one that is the most liked uh, among the questions that has been posted. So I think this comes from the more uh, guidance academic uh, angle, where Chongshen Liao asks that for students and hobbies who is actually interested to learn more and be involved in AIoT, uh, can the panelists provide any advice for them, whether there are more resources made available locally in the foreseeable future, say workshops, guide blogs, so I think one interesting perspective is maybe uh, you guys can, can share uh, apart from you know, where they can actually gather these kind of resources you know, of AIoT, what actually made you get into this field? You know? uh, like like uh, how do you slowly develop you know, your interests and capabilities in AIoT? I think, I think this is actually one, one area that you can share. Um. I think before, you know, Albert and Varun is going to share their extensive thought process before they, <laughs> before they get before into... Before out. <laughs> yeah, before they get into hardware and, you know, revisiting whether they will get into it again next time if they, they were given a chance. Um, you know, I can just... I, I mean, I'll just give a, a, a very brief, you know, way of... Um, 
uh, I mean, of answering this question, I think for us, uh, we started hardware so many years ago, and I think over time, you know, um, it was actually through very good partnerships, and um, we took it a step at a time. Like what um, I think a lot of people say, yes, the focus is very important. Uh, we we had very focused segments. We had very um, um, key priority product lines that we were trying to build around, um, like analog devices and things like that. Even at Planet Spark, you know, we are also very very specific specific with the verticals, right? So. Therefore, I think the thought process of going into it was actually an extension of something that we already knew we had strength in. Um, so I think it's always very important to build on the strength that you have um, before going into it, have that passion in it. Um, then at the same time, I, I feel that, you know, in Singapore, I think the government has put a lot of emphasis and priority in this sector, uh, giving very good grants for, you know, startup companies, through different types of programs, right? Even I think through Planet Spark itself, we do investments as well. Um, we have webinars that are upcoming, you know, in June, we're going to do one that's going to aggregate different startups together. We call for different solutions. So I think there is a very strong network going on already. Um, even accelerators are working together, right? To build a stronger network. So I think with this, there is a very strong support given to startups uh, to be able to find um, resources in the areas that they want um, to actually get help, help in. And I mean, we are always here for you. And I think I believe the government really um, is very strongly supportive of, of such initiatives. So, um, you know, I think SG Innovate definitely is also um, a space for you to explore um, different types of grants and different help and resources, right? So, yeah, I mean, I'm giving from a general perspective, but I think we should hear from the geeks and, uh, you know, I call them the, the tech geeks, right? Uh, about their thought process of coming into this. Yeah. Uh, I totally agree that, you know, Albert and Varun definitely have a lot to share, but given the time constraints, maybe you just want to part some uh, quick advice, you know, for, for our, our audience over here, you know, on how... I think I'll, I'll quickly chip in and say... Uh, the best way to start something is to start something. So if you want to get into the field, uh, go buy a, a development board from somewhere, get a Raspberry Pi, get an Arduino, put some sensors on it, write some code, uh, develop uh, some use cases that are useful to some business, um, start a company, raise investment, grow, scale, sell, uh, go IPO, <laughs> go wild. All right, uh, that will be, uh, that's right. I think that there's a lot of resources on the, on the available today. And if I'm very fortunate, a lot of platforms can be, can be used to and buy cheaply to use for AI development. But of course, when you talk about more niche and specialized, it's not so easily available. Well, we have very fortunate to have Linux Park here, right? They, they have access to a lot of uh, uh, hardware uh, uh, principles. Uh, they can support uh, uh, building specialized uh, platform. I think uh, it's worthwhile talking to them see what is your ideas and explore to them. They may help you to build the platform, right? For, exactly. for your, your and startup. you might even have an instant market. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes, yes. I've got two very good startups uh, sharing my strength here for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, I mean, that really goes to show that a very good, you know, uh, community, strong partnerships, the kind of relationships that you make, that the trust that, that you establish with one another is actually very important in order to grow within the entire deep tech space. So I think with that, uh, I would just like to close off this session. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for sharing. I regret that we are not able to uh, cover each and every questions that has been posted by uh, our audience. Uh, but that being said, once again, I still like to represent SG Innovate to thank all the attendees that stayed with us till now. A uh, big thank you to our speakers once again, to Li Ying, Albert, you know, Varun. Great insights and discussion points shared by everyone today. So once again, for the attendees, uh, do keep a lookout for our post-event mail, which will contain a recording of today's session. And do reach out to us for at uh, events at sginnovate.com. If you'd like to connect with any of our speakers here or just to have a chat with us for collaboration opportunities. You know, also, do give, remember to give us your post-event feedback when you exit the webinar or you can do it through the post-event mail as well. So with that, uh, this is Wei Min signing out from this webinar. I hope that everyone will have a great day ahead, great weekend ahead, stay safe, stay healthy, especially in this climate and hope to have you again in our next webinar. Thank you, everyone, and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.